basic pattern of populism is always the same, but the causes are not always the same, even if we now seem to be confronted with an image of a populist wave washing across the globe as a whole. National contexts still matter. The reasons why, for instance, Jean-Marie Le Pen or Jörg Haider, or for the matter of Viktor Orban, first became powerful or influential in different countries are still significantly different. What we are seeing, I think, more and more today is a basic conflict that structures our politics. It's a conflict between, on the one hand, those who want, broadly speaking, more openness. That can take the conventional form of more cultural and economic globalization. But less obviously, it can also be about more openness towards, let's say, ethnic, religious, or sexual minorities at home. At the other end of that conflict, of course, are those who want more closure and maybe also want to stick to traditional hierarchies. Well, it matters because this is the kind of conflict where populists can say, we have the answers here because we do a certain form of exclusionary identity politics. We tell you who truly belongs to the people and who doesn't belong to the people. Doesn't mean their answers are right, but they can say something. If our most urgent conflicts were, let's say, about global warming or bioethical questions to do with stem cell research, when life begins, and so on, I don't think populists would be very prominent in these debates, beyond perhaps saying, don't believe the experts because the experts are part of the elite. But they wouldn't have anything very substantive to say, but they do have something to say, again, doesn't make it right, about this other conflict. The single most important factor in explaining the outcome of the American election is partisanship. That might sound utterly banal, but it's of course not banal at all. And it kind of shows us that this image of, oh, the populists are winning everywhere, is deeply flawed. It buys into their own narrative that they actually represent the people, which is not true. And it basically takes our eyes off what might be much more important actors, namely establishment conservatives. And if you look at a recent example where this image of a wave, or now it's often presented as a kind of domino theory, where this already didn't quite work, namely Austria, it was very crucial that at least a significant number of conservative politicians clearly said, you know, we're not exactly enamored with a green candidate, but ultimately we're telling you citizens, don't vote for the populist candidate. And we know the outcome was different from what this image of an inevitable wave, one domino falling after the other, would suggest to us. It's always part of a larger dynamic. We need to understand how other actors position themselves vis-a-vis -vis populists. And we also need to bear in mind that sometimes what we tend to think of as established parties can actually reinvent themselves as de facto a populist party. Fidesz wasn't always a populist party. Today, it clearly is. But if we always operate with an op a kind of a counter image of, you know, here is the extremist party, Jobbik in the context here, and then that other thing must be the established party, that is already deeply misleading. Or if you think about some of the things that Theresa May has been saying in Britain, I think one can be forgiven for thinking that she's trying to reinvent the Conservative Party as a version of UKIP light. And if we only think in terms of this division of populist slash extremist and establishment, we're just not going to see that. The other thing though that I think is worth emphasizing is that contrary to a maybe naive liberal assumption that populists can't really govern because their policy ideas are so simplistic or everything is going to be chaos or because they're all protest parties they by definition can't govern because you know once you're in government how can you protest against yourself that all these assumptions are really false. Populists can govern as populists which in my view means they can govern as anti-pluralists. From the get-go, opposition isn't really legitimate. From the get-go, it's okay to attack independent institutions, independent media, even independent civil society, because these allegedly all prevent the true will of the true people from being implemented. So we've seen in a whole range of countries, Turkey, Hungary, now to some degree uh, Poland, that there is a pattern that this has a systematic, if you like, 
quality, it doesn't mean it'll be there forever and we have to lose hope, but it's just very naive to think that by itself it will somehow not get off the ground or implode. That's clearly, clearly wrong.